if your pastor is giving you 90% their words and 10% God's words, you're not being fed. You are not being led. I'm a teacher and also an evangelist. Two separate definitions. I teach the word of God as a teacher and I spread the word of God as an evangelist. Many people ask me all the time, Heather, what church do you go to? Did you go to divinity school? And I give them all the same answer. I stopped going to church because I became a part of the church. I became the church as a member of the body of Christ. First Corinthians 12, starting at verse 12, all the way to verse 27 tells us that we are one body with many members. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, the one body are all one body. So it is with Christ. Verse 13 says, for in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we are all made to drink of one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 through 13. So when I say that I don't go to church because I became the church, what I mean by that is that I became a member of one body, according to scripture. I left the church because I was not getting fed once I started studying the Bible. Now, I read the Bible and study it seven days a week. And I've been doing this every day since 2019. When I started studying the Bible and spending time with God by building a real relationship, R-E-A-L relationship and not a relationship, as I was going to church, I wasn't being fed the same way that I was when I was in scripture. The pastor would create a whole sermon and would give us five to seven verses to go along with that sermon. And because I was in scripture and studying the word of God, a lot of the verses I knew. The problem was, is that the pastor would give us one verse, but wouldn't give us the background to the verse or explain or expound on the verse. So it would go something like this. The pastor would write a sermon. Let's just say the sermon was, won't he do it? That's the title of his sermon. So as an example, the pastor has the sermon titled, Won't He Do It? So he would pick Bible verses in relation to that topic. A good prime example of a Bible verse that would go with the title and topic, Won't He Do It? is Philippians 4.19. And God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Another verse he might use in relation to that topic, Won't He Do It? might be something like Matthew 7.7. 7 which says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Or even Jeremiah 32, 27, which says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Then he might give you Psalm 37, 4, which says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. All of those verses would be most likely used and applied in his sermon, won't he do it? So the pastor writes the sermon. He gives you the title and he gives you some verses. The rest of it, the rest of the sermon is all his words. He's going to start preaching about won't he do it. He's going to start telling you about all the times that he did it for him. He's going to start prophesying on how he's going to do it for you. But what more do you know about this verse in Philippians 4.19? Who was speaking? That was the Apostle Paul. Who was he speaking to? The Philippians. And why? Paul was in prison at this time, most likely in Rome. He sent a letter to the people of Philippi, which are the Philippians, and his purpose for sending that letter was to encourage them and to strengthen them in their faith. A lot of the times, pastors will use Bible scripture to describe what they're talking about, but they're not teaching the word of God. They're really teaching you principles of the world, how to deal with stress, encouraging you. But how have you learned the word of God versus learning cliche scriptures. How many of you have read the entire book of Philippians? Do you understand it? Do you know why it was written? How many other books did the Apostle Paul write? And for what reason? Why was the Apostle Paul imprisoned? Really what I'm trying to ask you is, do you know scripture, not verses? Knowing the scriptures and studying them helps you to apply them 
in your walk with Christ. Spending time in the word helps you build a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Let me show you exactly what I mean by pastors and preachers speaking 90% their words and 10% God's words. Check this out. Whenever you see a person who has a lot of people in their circle, it doesn't mean they're friendly. It means they're careless. <laughs> God said, Gideon, go do it. He says, all right, let me bring my 32,000. God says, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, God says, this is how we're going to do it. This is what we're going to do. He says, this is how we're going to shrink the circle. I want you to go before the 32,000. And I want you to say these words. Anybody who's afraid, leave now. And the Bible says 22,000 of them walked away. You'd be surprised how many scary people you surrounded by. Desperation destroys discernment. You can't make good decisions when you're desperate. When you're desperate, every opportunity looks like a good opportunity. When you're desperate, every job looks like a good job. When you're desperate, every man looks like a good man. When you're desperate, every woman looks like a good woman. When if your heart is not right, even though God is speaking to you, you will not listen. Do you know that God allows sickness? He allows problems in order to speak to you? How many of you are having problems today? Be honest, you are having problems. You have some problems. How you so you can replace certain people, but you can't replace what they bring. Y'all missed that. Yep. So they got another one, but they didn't get another you. I'm going to say that one more time. They got Let me tell you something. Anytime you invite the wrong person to your table, you become the meal. You'd be surprised at how many people who know who you are and you don't know who you are. And so they're in your life, not because they love you, but because they're borrowing your influence. The enemy only has one or two tricks. He is not the creator. He's going to keep hitting you in the same soft spot. Yes, I'm inadequate. No, I don't have what it takes. No, I don't have everything that I need. When God gives you peace, embrace it and receive it, protect it. It's better to throw away your documents and carry peace in order of priority. Find peace. I'm speaking to someone. I know that the rent is due, but find peace. You better stop ignoring them signs. Because where you're going, you're going to need somebody with the same energy you got. You can't be around people who are around people you can't trust. They reject Moses. Moses was living in the palace. He was a prince. They were slaves, and they rejected him as a leader. Can I tell you something? The people who reject you, it is not a reflection of who you are. It's a rejection of who they are. Nothing lasts without reciprocity. You can only use me for a while. If you keep taking more than you're giving either i'm going to wear out or i'm going to wake up how badly you desire something is revealed by how strongly you pursue it how badly you desire something is revealed by how strongly you pursue it you know people will tell you oh i just wish i had a body like that but no, no they don't because they don't want to do what you do. They don't want your discipline. They want your results. Any area in your life you realize is shallow. Man, sink yourself into God's word in that area. You're dealing with stewardship issues. What does the scripture says about stewardship? You're dealing with lust issue. What does the scripture says about lust? Betrayal is your way to promotion. Amen. This is why you need to stop crying for people. Now you see what I mean? Those sermons are 90% their words and almost 0% God's words. If you're in a church that is not giving you biblical teachings, how are you being fed the word of God? Find you a Bible teaching church, study scripture, and build a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You be blessed.